If you're a student of prophecy, what I'm about to share is hopefully going to move you into doing just a little bit more work in the coming days. Check this out. High court rules. Tel Aviv stores can open Sabbath. I'm just going to read this first section here. It says supermarkets, entertainment centers, and pharmacies will be allowed to operate in Tel Aviv from Friday sunset to Saturday sunset. In other words, as expected, the Jews have bowed to the Roman ban of sin, just as students of prophecy declared they would for many years, because Christian prophecy will be fulfilled no matter how many people think otherwise. And what I mean by that is, Decades ago, in the mid-1990s, in fact, when I started to declare the present truth on the streets regarding the mark of the beast, people laughed out loud at me and suggested I sit for a fitting of a tinfoil bonnet because I stated everyone, and this includes the Jews, will eventually be pressured by the popes of Rome to keep Sunday holy. They claimed it would be possible for all the Christians to embrace Sunday laws because they already keep Sunday holy. But they said that would never happen with the Jews. They also laughed when I said that when the Jews finally do agree with Rome on Sunday Sabbath, Rome will know they have the upper hand, and then they're going to go for the jugular of their theology and go after the original Sabbath day that they keep. And then 13 years later, in June of 2007, I shared in my newsletter that the Jewish people were in fact considering, by a majority vote no less at 56%, to support a bill that would make Sunday a day of rest in Israel. And even though we now saw the Jews actually considering such a law, the laughing continued. The basic reality in this is, as students of prophecy, we knew all along the Jews would do this because they denied Jesus as Messiah 2,000 years ago. Even though they claim otherwise, as do the Muslims, their God is not the God of the Bible. For if he was, they would never have even considered discussing a Sunday Sabbath in Jerusalem. But they don't believe the God of the Bible at all. I mean, they openly denied his son as their prophesied Messiah, and so they have no power behind their faith. Any threat to their well-being as a nation would be too much for them to bear. This is why Rome infiltrated and introduced a Sunday Sabbath to them. As I declared many years ago, when they finally go for that bill that uplifts the Roman Sabbath above the Sabbath of the Bible, they will become pawns in the hands of Rome. Well, they finally did pass that bill six years later on February 23, 2013. And as expected, it was then Rome knew they got them right where they wanted them. As of that date, the Jews now declare Sunday to be a work-free day in Jerusalem, just as Rome has been demanding everyone on the planet do for decades. But in order for the Pope to make it truly universal, he had to get the oldest known Sabbath-keeping people on earth to follow his lead. Now, since the Jews have no real faith in the God of the Bible to protect them from Rome, they easily bowed in worship of the Pope, just as prophecy predicted they would. And so, as we also expected, Rome decided to take it a step further, wherein they could use craft to rewrite their laws so as to make working on the real Sabbath from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, to appear as completely acceptable as this article now confirms just happened. This was done to further lock down their rebellion against the God of the Bible. And why go for the throat on this one? Well, Satan hates God's law that much. He knows all about the power behind the real remnant Christians of today, who not only declare Jesus Christ as Lord, but also declare his law is still valid throughout eternity. In fact, As per the two fruits of a true Christian, as outlined in Revelation 14, 12, that is the main reason those real Christians never received the mark of the beast, and that's why Satan's so angry. And what is the mark, you might ask? I'm going to let the Vatican itself, that's been pushing it for centuries, answer that one. Thank you for watching. God bless.